Welcome to Speak the Truth and Love with Clint Day from St. Simons Island, Georgia on WCGA 1100 AM, where we do speak the truth in love based on Ephesians 4.15. In today's woke PC culture, there are many forces that want to stop free speech, especially for people of faith. Good men and women must be willing to stand up for their faith and to preserve our freedom. True freedom comes from faith in Jesus Christ. In John 8.32, God's Word says, The truth will set you free. Today, I'd like to welcome you, friends, and I'd like to welcome Megan De La Rosa today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's so great to have you here, Megan. And one of the things that I know about, uh, a lot of times when we go to church, and our church has been recently doing a series on marriage and singleness and that type of thing, and, and it sometimes feels like as single people, a lot of times the message is really more geared toward a, a marriage and family, and we all have that desire maybe to be married or whatever, and wherever God would lead us. And of course, sometimes people like myself have been through a divorce or Mm -hmm. they've been widowed and and they're going through some tough decisions and they have certain goals and aspirations. And I think a lot of times in our society, it's very hard to stay pure in the craziness of it Mm -hmm. it all, especially in the situation of being single. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of friends of mine are just like, look, I'm just not even going to date. You know, Mm -hmm. and of course, as they mature, sometimes that's where they are. And, of course, uh, younger people obviously have more desire to get married or whatever and be in relationship. And and so, again, when you go to church Sunday mornings, a lot of times you feel like the sermon's geared toward families and marriage mm-hmm. and that type of thing. And so, again, but yet when you look out in the audience, probably over right. half the people there are there by themselves. They may be mm-hmm. uh, divorced, widowed, never never married, or they may be just their spouse, spouse doesn't go to church, whatever. Right. And so when you look around the crowd, you go, wow, there's you know, more than you realize here sometimes. I think a lot of churches don't realize how much that is an impact, right. the singleness, if you will. And a lot of people that are married don't realize that. I know when I was married, I didn't really think about think single about people yeah. very much. Mm-hmm. I just didn't think about it. I just remembered when I was. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, of course, like I say, when we talk about that, and you're obviously a counselor and you're very successful, I know you do a lot of counseling in both directions with young people and people that are more mature. Yeah. And and just what are some ideas that you have about that and staying, you know, pure and keeping your attitude right, heart right before God yeah. in your where you are in your counseling experience. Yeah. Well, to go to talk about like the church and the messages that are given. First, I do want to just give a lot of grace because I think yes. it's hard. I can't I do not envy the pastor's yes. position to try to cast a wide net to make sure that right. you're speaking to all the people. Um, and I think that I know I can speak for myself. We all walk into church with a little bit of a distorted view of how we're receiving things. So as a single person, when I hear, hey, we're about to do a four-week series on marriage, I'm like, oh, you know, I have exactly. thoughts about that. All my friends said the same thing. Yeah, that right. they, they were like, and especially some lady friends that are, that are that like CNAs and people that help me, they were like, oh, no, here we go again. Right. I so don't want to even go. I mean, it kind of can else. lend yeah. to that. But then I really need to check in with myself, like, what is that actually about? Exactly. Lord, what are you trying to say to me there? And, you know, I think that the church can also continue to go, we need to talk about, there's this tension, like we need to talk about marriage. Marriage is a very important relationship that is under attack from the enemy because the enemy doesn't want us to have strong family um, units together. So there's this tension that I feel of like, yes, I know and understand that we need to talk about marriage and the sanctity of that um, important relationship. And how do we also include, I guess I would say, the people that aren't in that position right now. And no, I know for me, sometimes I can, out of my own wounding, when I hear that message, it almost makes me feel like because I'm single, I'm less than. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily what the person's trying to portray, right? right. But that can be what I can feel if it's not communicated pretty clearly in a way that's like, hey, if you are married, this is what this scripture can mean, or this is what it can look like as a believer. And hey, if you're single for the myriad of reasons that you could be single, this is how this would translate in your life. And when that happens, that really, I really appreciate that message that I can see kind of both um, angles of that. Right. Well, and I, I totally agree with that. And I know, again, certain times of the year, you just have to, you know, we're talking about trying to stay pure in that single relate, single mm-hmm. lifestyle. Of course, you want to stay that way in a marriage, too. But yep. I know during the spring, a lot of times, I have mm-hmm. to kind of readjust my eyes. Mm-hmm. And I want to encourage men out there to really think about what you're doing and how you're watching people. Because mm-hmm. you're going from these clothes that are pretty covered up in the winter 
and they come in the spring and all of a sudden it's like, oh man, I'm at the beach or whatever. And all mm-hmm. of a sudden I just got to go. Mm-hmm. That's somebody else's wife. That's somebody else's daughter. Right. That's some, that's my little sister in the, mm-hmm. in the youth department or whatever. And I got to bounce my eyes. And, um, that's really a challenge. I think I want to mm-hmm. encourage men to do that, to mm-hmm. learn how to bounce your eyes. I know I've done every man's battle for years. I've mm-hmm. taught it for years. And that's one of the key things they say, you know, you, when you're riding down your car and you're ri- riding down Fred Rieker or your favorite road, you know, to really, instead of watching that person run, just, you know, bounce your eyes, just say, right. look to say to yourself. And that's a key thing because a lot of things obviously begin with the thought, you know, you right. think it first and all of a sudden you right. get off, off balance. Yeah. And so I'd want to encourage people, uh, mm-hmm. especially men with that. Of course, mm-hmm. I know ladies have that same right. challenge. So. Yeah. And I like how you said to, it doesn't matter what relational status you have. If you're married or if you're single, we all have choices that we need to make that align with how, with purity in right. that relationship. So I think sometimes, you know, one seems easier than the other, but it's like, no, if I'm married, I'm making sure that I'm, you know, protecting the sanctity of that marriage. And if I'm single, then I'm protecting myself from maybe a future spouse in our relationship there. So we all have choices of purity, um, depending on what type of relationship we're in. Totally agree with that. And of course, that relationship with, um, you know, with God, I mean, it Mm -hmm. it is amazing how we do things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we're yet we're not even realizing it, Mm -hmm. you know, and and I mean, again, where we take our eyes, where we take our thoughts, mm-hmm. and then what leads us to make decisions that take right. us down a path that we regret. Right. And um, and I, I'm just always having to say, Lord, I want my relationship with you, mm-hmm. which is obviously the most important relationship right. I have, whether mm-hmm. I'm married or unmarried, that I really am pursuing him and you know doing what I need to do, mm-hmm. reading the word of God and praying and being with mm-hmm. a community that encourages me in that way. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's also interesting, too, that, you know, a lot of people start dating someone, mm-hmm. and then they sometimes ask a question, is how far is too far, too? Mm-hmm. You know, how do you answer that to somebody? Yeah, well, I think, you know, entering into a relationship, for me, a very important piece, if you are a believer, is to check in to see if they are a believer, yes. <laughs> you know, and that You want to be equally yoked, You want to be equally yoked. 100%. Um, yeah, and then, you know, at some point, having those conversations, because, what I've seen is now in our culture, even Christians, people who are following the Lord, and I do believe are saved, have different viewpoints on what that means to stay pure um, in, in an intimate way in the relationship. So I do think it's very helpful to have conversations about what does that look like? What do you see in Scripture? You all can study that together. And how do we keep our relationship pure as we're dating? Absolutely. That's so hard, though. Mm-hmm. So what happens mm-hmm. if somebody kind of violates those boundaries? What what would you recommend as a counselor? Yeah. What would you say to them? So say more about that. If somebody Okay, I mean they they're they they know that they they have certain boundaries that right. they've set in their relationship. Right. And you know, one night it's late and mm-hmm. someone says I'm not going to even go home and right. you know, they may be on the couch for a while but they decide, "Hey, I don't like the thunderstorm or whatever." Right. Whatever. Mm-hmm. cause them to take they cross via, that yeah boundary. they cross that boundary that and so have. what would I say to that Correct. couple that comes right. in and That's talks right. about it I think I would ask them like how did that make you feel do you mm-hmm. basically I'm checking in like is there conviction from right. the Holy Spirit about that and like you said typically you don't just say oh we were intimate and I don't know what happened how, how right, we got there, right. right? Like there's these series of events that happen to get to that place. So then I would talk with a couple of like, hey, let's talk about what are some things for you guys that are, we're not trying to see like how close we can get to the boundary, right? How, exactly. how far can we get That's away from it? That's not what we it? want to do. That's yeah. Right. So if it's that we don't lie horizontally together, that we, right. you know, at a certain point at time of night, we go our separate ways. Um, and we're doing that you know, if I, if I was dating someone and a man said that, I would feel so honored, you know, even though there's, it's so tempting, like, oh no, maybe I'd like for you to stay. But if he said, no, I have, we've talked about this and I'm going, I wouldn't feel rejected. I'd feel very honored and loved by that That's in right. the long run. So Absolutely. just helping them get a taste of, of what that could look like. And it, it, to me again goes, it's amazing on Sunday morning, mm-hmm. how many couples that are there that are basically living together. Yeah. You know, without right. maybe having the same Mm-hmm. place they send their rent check or their mortgage mm-hmm. payment right but they're basically are right and when you when you see them and I, I've, I've got some people that are in my life that mm-hmm. I'm kind of going hey 
you know, what should you do about that? You mm-hmm. know, should we should I encourage you not to do that. Right. Okay. Right. Well, it's platonic. It's fine. We're not, ma- you know, we're not crossing any boundaries. And I'm kind of like, I just mm-hmm. wouldn't put myself in that situation. Not setting yourself up for success. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that's good, like you said from this podcast, is speaking truth in love. So I'm going to tell my friend or the people that I'm seeing, like, hey, this is a bit of a, you know, warning, warning. We need to kind of pay attention to this. And I can talk to them about it. I can encourage them to explore what that – what does Jesus say about this? What does the Bible say about that? Um, You know, do you feel conviction about that? And talking with them through so that – Ultimately, as we know with kind of everything, that person has to come to that realization of their own. And when it's their conviction, they have a better outcome to make the choice that's needed. Absolutely. Yeah. How about any other advice? I mean, I know you probably have a lot of advice to someone that's single. They're mm-hmm. they're just they want to have a godly relationship, yeah. with, you know, with with the right person. But let's go ahead and say some other things. What are yeah. Other thoughts? Well, like you said, I mean, the most important thing is that I am aligned in my relationship with Jesus, and um, you know, once again, there's this tension of I'm aligned in my relationship with Jesus, and I know truth that He. He loves me. He's for me. He doesn't withhold good from me. He has a perfect plan for me. He's sovereign. You know, I know all of those truths. So then I trust that as long as I have my eyes on him and I'm doing my next steps, then perhaps if it's his will, he'll bring someone else along who's also running after Jesus with all they got. Absolutely. That is so good. And I, Mm -hmm. again, I just, that's where I want to, I want to keep my focus too is Mm -hmm. uh, again, what does Holy Spirit say? What does he want me to do? Yeah. He will bring the right person at the right mm-hmm. time if that's what he wants. That's right. If he wants mm-hmm. me to be single, there's nothing wrong with being single. It's that's a lot right. of fun. You, yep. you get to make your decisions. You don't have to ask freedom. anybody for that's permission. Right. Yep. Um, you know, I can go anywhere I want to, basically. Right. Within, you know, if I got to travel or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, that, that, you know, I don't have to ask kind of permission. Is this okay? Mm-hmm. Or, you mm-hmm. know, have a mutual, that mutual respect you need mm-hmm. to have in the marriage. So we're going to take a, a quick break. Okay. It's Clint Day from Speak the Truth and Love. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Speak the Truth in Love with Clint Day from St. Simons Island, Georgia on WCGA 1100 AM. I'm here today with Megan, and we're talking about uh, the issue of singleness and trying to stay pure in that whole process. And um, I know everybody in this on this audience has the people they know that are struggling with relationship or desire really hard to be married. Um, what would you say to the person out there that really wants to get married they're at the age of like, hey, I need to do something. My biological clock is right. there. Uh, we all, you know, we are all against that certain wall and certain, certain right. things. At, at least that's what we feel. Mm-hmm. What would you say to that person to uh, make sure they're heading in the right direction? Yeah. Well, I am that person, yeah. <laughs> so I can relate to that yeah. very well. Um, so, like I said, there's a tension that's there, uh, but what – I believe the most important thing for me to do is remind myself about the truth and the character of who God is. Mm -hmm. And so I know that he is good, that he is for me, that he doesn't withhold from me. He's a God who is characterized of a giver who gives generously and abundantly. And so if I know, I believe that is his character, that is true. So then I want to trust that that's what he would be for me too. So if I'm in a single or a season of singleness, then that must be where he has me to bring him the most glory for my good and for the good of others. And so it's, that's true. And I can still, I believe, hold the desire and the longing because it's still there to get married and to have a family of my own one day and, and trusting that in his perfect timing, if that's his will, then that will be. And I, and I really do believe that, you know, if I get married one day, that it will be a man who makes me more purposeful for the kingdom than I would be on my own. And so that's what I'm looking for. Absolutely. You know? And have you ever met someone that, that kind of got desperate, if you will, mm-hmm. and made a decision yeah. that they really regretted in a marriage relationship? Yes. <laughs> Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I think... I think that happens. Yeah, I'm just thinking. Yeah, it happens a lot. It's you know I have so many young girls um, that I counsel, and even let's say 20 years old to 25 years old range that already feel the anxiety over not being married and what is my life going to look like if I'm not. And that's a scary place to be because sometimes out of that desperation they will stick with a relationship that's 
to- like it can go all the way from just like not healthy to really toxic and not good for them. But it's kind of that mentality. Well, at least I have someone. And I think in the moment that might work, but as I know, long term, and as you know, I mean, marriage is a commitment for a lifetime. That's right. It's a very long road to to take ahead when any time it could be a marriage, it could be anything in our life, right? That we rush ahead of God and His plan it doesn't usually go well Absolutely. for us. <laughs> so. Well, and again, I go back to you know, you're and you're in that pre dating or dating period where mm-hmm. you're where you're bi- you're crossing boundaries, and I, mm-hmm. I remember. Uh, you know, my youth, of course, high school, college, particularly, um, you know, I would, you know, just whatever. I was kind of in a wild man state, partying and drugging and stuff. Okay. And on March 7th, 1981, I, re- I rededicated my life. And, and then on March uh, 18th, 1983, I got rebaptized in all places, the Jordan mm-hmm. River. And I remember I came back and my college girlfriend, there were just certain things that is like, this can't happen anymore. Yeah. I'm, I am just killing myself spiritually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that people don't understand sometimes when you come together in ways you should not to yeah. do pre-marriage, that it just destroys your spiritual walk. It just yeah. hurts. And you don't even sometimes realize it. You know, you mm-hmm. kind of justify it. You kind of, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to marry her. I'm planning on marrying her. But right. again, I just remember it was like, this has got to stop. March mm-hmm. 18th, 1983, I got rebaptized. You know, I'd made that decision two years earlier, but this yeah. next level was like, ah, I just cannot, can't go there. Mm-hmm. And, and so, but so many people in mm-hmm. trying to please someone else mm-hmm. will allow that type of thing to happen in their mm-hmm. life. And so they don't realize mm-hmm. you're hurting the temple of the Holy Spirit, right. that your body is the temple of the Holy right. Spirit. Right. And so when that happens, it may you just may have to end that relationship. Yeah. And I remember this one particular person whom I really you know enjoyed being with him, but we broke up, mm-hmm. and, which was the most healthy thing to do. And then we went our separate ways. And I remember, you know, she tried to come back in my life. She had her boyfriend at the time died. And mm-hmm. so all of a sudden she's at my house, you know, mm-hmm. talking to me, you know, crying and mm-hmm. grieving. And the temptation for her to stay there was just so great. Mm -hmm. But I really felt like God said to me, if you allow this to happen, then you're losing, you're losing what I have is best for you. Right. And I literally had just met someone and uh, that I really liked that grew up in the same church. And Mm -hmm. this person had to come from a Catholic background, which is different than my Baptist background. And we can talk about being equally yoked, but there's sometimes there's a big difference even between a Catholic and a Baptist, right? right? We're both Christians, at least we hope. But I don't understand certain things about the Catholic Church. She didn't mm-hmm. maybe understand things about the Baptist Church. But I met a girl in my church, right? And so it was easier to say, but I literally felt like I heard Holy Spirit say, yeah. you know, you're make, you, you can make a choice. You can yeah. deal with your flesh or, and lose what I got for you. Right. And, of course, ended up having four children with her, and regrettably we went through a divorce. Mm-hmm. But the beauty of it is, you know, mm-hmm. God takes that, you know, those mistakes that we made to get to a divorce, but mm-hmm. also four children. Right number seven grandchildren on the way. And so mm-hmm. I'm very, very grateful. Not mm-hmm. the way I want it to be, but that's right. what happened. Right. And uh, But again, that story, and I know there are people out mm-hmm. there that are struggling right now. They're trying to figure out, mm-hmm. is this the one mm-hmm. or, or am I compromising you know, to go this mm-hmm. direction? And again, what would you say to someone that's kind of struggling with that decision? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, your situation's tough because it was, you were dating someone and y'all had kind of a rhythm of your relationship. Mm-hmm. And then you had an encounter with the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and ha- needed to change some things, right? Totally. And that was an individual experience. And now you're linked with somebody else who wasn't maybe mm-hmm. on the same page, Not at right? All. And that can happen in, you know, I think about. Um, guys in college who who are in a frat and then they get to know Jesus and they have to make a lot of changes with That's their right. friendships I did right? that. because of I did. the conviction. So a similar yeah, kind of sure. experience. Um, but it sounds like that conviction of the Holy Spirit, thankfully, was stronger than the flesh to know, like, even though this decision is so hard, it's going to be worth it. Because it always is. The reason why God has boundaries for us and these limits for us is not to keep us from beauty it's to help us flourish and gain more if we live within the limits and the boundaries of what he set for us they're good for us they're not um what's the word i'm like shrink i'm thinking like it's it's not a grasp it's not a a shortcoming to follow the will of the lord and that's what i hear that you did is say i'm gonna i'm gonna do this and make this decision even though it's really hard because i know that if the lord says to do this then it must be 
what's going to be the best for me Absolutely. and for her, honestly. Absolutely. That's so true. And I, I, I go back to, okay, so you've got somebody that's out there right now maybe listening to us. Mm-hmm. And half the marriage is into, into divorce now, and even in the church, it's mm-hmm. nothing different, which it's totally wrong, but that's the way it's going. Mm-hmm. And, and there's seasons of where a woman, uh, the lady leaves, and in case of what I've heard it called a walk-away wife syndrome, and there, it's like the devil knows, he, and then he starts getting after men for a season. Mm. If you had someone that was going through a divorce right now, what would you do to encourage them to be very careful? Because it seems like a lot of people I know that have mm-hmm. walked with Christ and have, you know, you, you would look at them as role models in a lot of ways, but they go through a divorce, and it's like they're back to their teen years, and they're going mm-hmm. through a wild phase. Yeah. And they're almost, I mean, they're getting crazy. It's just yeah. like, what are you doing? I mean, yeah. you're, you're going to hurt yourself. Don't you realize what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Um, they maybe just get really wild in every way possible, maybe partying mm-hmm. more or whatever. Yeah. So what would you say yeah. to them? Well, I think if I'm curious about that behavior that happens, you know, I think of two things. One, maybe they felt trapped in the relationship and they couldn't express who they were, they got married early and didn't get to experience mm-hmm. those years. So then out of the selfishness and pride and flesh, we're like, well, I deserve to, to have this freedom right. that I never had. And then an- another thought that probably is combined with this is out of pain. Yeah. I, things come out sideways, <laughs> Correct. you know, and I might find myself out of my pain looking to numb. And I might do that through partying or through another relationship quickly um, after going through a really hard divorce is hard no matter what the Correct. circumstance is um so what could you do instead of that <laughs> you know some people will even say wait two years before you enter a relationship after Correct. divorce because there's so much shrapnel, i guess that kind of happens as you walk into a new season of singleness that it's so important to ground yourself back and kind of rediscovering like who am I and who am I in the Lord and what does he have for me and let me at least kind of get my bearings before I just enter into another relationship that if I don't do that step a I'm probably just going to bring right back into the second relationship Mm -hmm. what was wrong with the first one (laughs) you know all right we're going to take another quick break this is Clint Day from St. Simon's Island Georgia on WCGA 1100 AM we'll be right back this is Clint Day with Speak the Truth in Love. I just want to remind everyone out there that I'm here today talking with Megan. And I want to remind everyone or tell everyone about an event on March on May 14th at 5.30 p.m. It's called the Field of Faith event, a partnership between FCA, The Gathering Place, and Young Life. They're all hosting it. It's at the Glen Academy sta- Stadium with guest speaker Adam Wainwright. What a great speaker he'll be, he is. And for more information, go to the www.thegp.org, www.thegp.org. And uh, I recently saw Adam Wainwright on May, uh, March 9th up at the uh, Grand Ole Opry. In concert. That was the okay. first time he'd ever played up there. I <laughs> saw him at uh, the uh, men's event at the church, at mm-hmm. the uh, community church, Iron Man event. And, and they, he was talking about that being his first show mm-hmm. in, at uh, the, the Grand Ole Opry. And I made the decision. I wanted to go oh, see no. that because I got I family that in was Nashville. Yeah. It was incredible. And the whole rest mm-hmm. of the lineup was incredible. But I want to encourage you all to do that. I also want to encourage you to download the app for w, uh, 1100 AM WCGA uh, because we, we have the ability. You can listen to it anywhere you are. Whenever you're traveling, mm-hmm. you can listen to it. I want to encourage you to download that app. So let's go back. We were talking a little bit about someone that's kind of getting kind of wild. They've mm-hmm. gone through a divorce. They've had a loss, maybe even a widow. Mm-hmm. Maybe they, yeah. they're widowed. They're yeah. single for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And what are some other warning signs that you would encourage them to just be aware of? You mentioned, yeah. I, th- I think a key one is making sure you have that community. Yeah. You know, that's not necessarily a warning sign, but the warning would not isolate. Isolation, that's Don't right. Isolate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it just seems like, you know, drug addicts love to isolate. Mm-hmm. I got my drugs. I can... Mm-hmm. You know, I can do it at home, and I don't have to worry about anybody else. Mm-hmm. Don't want to get a DUI or whatever. But when someone's gone through that mm-hmm. really detrimental divorce is, you know, terrible. Mm-hmm. Of course, loss of life is terrible. Mm-hmm. But what are some other things that you would yeah. encourage them to do? Well, I think about myself because I don't know if you know my story, but when I was younger, I did go through a divorce. Yes. So, yeah, I did. Yeah, we talked about that, that before, yes. Um, and so when I think about what helped me and how I encourage my clients, too, that are walking through a similar situation is, I mean, I've, number one is our my relationship with Jesus. I mean, yes. I just 
never felt so desperate to yes. cling to him. Yes. Um, that's when I was introduced to counseling. So that was really big for me too. I think the integration of counseling to help me understand some things and my relationship with Jesus was huge and community. I wanted to isolate, but they wouldn't let me, which is good. Yeah, I did have a great family. Did you have a friends. Bible study group or something that you were involved with? I did okay. at that time. Yeah, um, yes. I already had that going. So that yes. was thankful. And they were one of the first ones I, you know, kind of shared and just totally gathered around me. And, right. and thankfully I was in such a hard place that I just let them, you know, that's not normally my MO is to let right. a lot of people help me, sure. but I just kind of surrendered to their help and they were just each in their own way, had different giftings that loved me so well. And um, yeah, so that community and not isolating was really big, you know, and then the counseling helped me with the shame component. That is another, um, I guess you'd say like red flag or warning yes. sign that to really work on. And I did that pretty immediately that I'm not going to let my identity be that I'm divorced. You know, I'm not going to sit in that shame and that condemnation. And Romans 8, 1 that says there is no more yes. condemnation for those who are in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. And yes. just really working that verse out, <laughs> yes. you know, because it was such a, life-giving verse that I just just needed to understand, not just in my head, but in my heart. So. Absolutely. That's mm-hmm. so true. And I I think about even when I went through the divorce, we, we were in a home group. Mm-hmm. And obviously, everybody in there was married, right? Mm-hmm. We were in a married home yep. group. Yep. And then when, when I found my next home group, our church now tries to put single people with single people and mm-hmm. you know, married people with married people. Mm-hmm. And I understand that. But I'm so grateful for my home group that I was able to join yeah. – that had a combination. They had healthy yeah. marriages. Mm-hmm. They had single women and men. Mm-hmm. And I liked that a lot better because I just, I didn't feel, it, I, it's not Lost weird, but I just, exactly. Or, yeah. Or yeah. like I had a scarlet letter over yeah. my head or mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, and, and I just did not want that mm-hmm. experience. I mean, mm-hmm. God allowed that for, to be in my life. Mm-hmm. And again, to have that, you got to have a healthy church. Yes. Right. You got to attend a healthy church. Yeah. And if you can't get up on Sunday morning, and be excited about going to church, Mm -hmm. then why are you going to that church? Mm -hmm. Find a church you can get excited about. Mm -hmm. That's my feeling, Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And we're fortunate here that we have a lot of great, solid churches Mm -hmm. in our community, but also understand the challenging aspect of finding the church you like and one you enjoy. And, of course, there's no such thing as a perfect church if you're expecting to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Or there may be people there you, quote, don't like or you consider hypocrites or whatever. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got your list of reasons why I will not go to church. Mm -hmm. But I want to encourage you to find that church. You know, if you're out there and you're looking and you're asking God Mm -hmm. to show you the right place and go to a church that believes the Bible. Don't go to a church that's going to tell you what you want to hear. Right. They need to tell you what the Word of God says about everything because if they're not telling the Word of God, first of all, I don't think it's going to grow. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't grow. Mm-hmm. And I'm also big on, you know, what's the prayer church? What's the prayer of that church? What's their, what are other aspects of what they're teaching in that church? Right. And, uh, you know, what does a pastor believe? Mm-hmm. I mean, does a pastor believe, you know, where we're heading prophetically with those type of things? What do they believe? Mm-hmm. So that's just to me very, very important. Mm-hmm. And, again, I go back to my friend's, that have not had those support systems yeah. and the destructive things yeah. they face. Yeah. And I, I just, and my heart goes out to them. Yeah. And I think about my mom, my parents were married <coughs> for 30 years and we grew up in wow. a Methodist church yes. and we're the pews, you know, you sat yes, in the same yes, pew yes, every yes. time. And yes. we literally just grew up there. And when my parents got divorced, I was about 21 years old. I remember my mom being like, I can't go back there. Hmm. I can't, what am I supposed to do? I can't walk in. I can't. And I thought something's wrong (laughs) with that. And I'm not saying that the church was wrong. You know, it definitely could have been her lens, but I understood the tension that she was fighting there. And so that's, you know, one of the things I think about with single moms with beloved is wanting (laughs) to make sure that they don't feel like they can't go to church. Right. We want a church that just welcomes Everybody. obviously we're yes. on the word of the lord i'm yes. not pro-divorce or anything yes. like that you know but that we will say hey you're welcome here amen. and we just want to love we want to be a place people run to not run away from Very that's good. what we want to do with jesus amen yeah. let's take a quick break this is clint dave with wcga we'll be right back welcome back to speak truth and love with clint dave from saint simon's island georgia on wcga 1100 a.m where we do speak the truth and love here 
And one of the ministries that you've been involved with, you've helped found it. Holy mm-hmm. Spirit gave you the vision. Sure did. Single moms, belo- the beloved. Mm-hmm. And I just, I love how Dr. Uh, Mark uh, Fritchman, our pastor, many times talks about mm-hmm. how fun it is to go by on a Tuesday <laughs> night and see yeah. the parking lot full of young people running around, mm-hmm. being poured into by people, uh, you know, the, the, the loving grandfather they may not have, or the loving That's father right. they may not have, the loving mm-hmm. sister or whatever, the people, the volunteers that go to help there. Mm-hmm. And we understand so much that, you know, there's a lot of single moms out there. Yeah. And it's extremely difficult. It's hard enough when you have two parents with three or four kids. Yeah. And, and, but y'all, you, God led you to do that. Yes. Well, tell us about it. Yeah. So, like I said earlier, watching, my mom get divorced, my parents get divorced, but seeing the effect of my mom with that, honestly, it was like the first time that kind of awakened me to, oh my gosh, what's happening to women right. who are getting divorced? I just yeah. didn't have a lot of friends whose parents sure. had gone through that. Right. And obviously here I am like seeing it firsthand. And so that's when the Lord started, just kind of deposited in my spirit, I believe, right. like, hey, somebody needs to help <laughs> these right. moms, you know? So find a need and fill it. Yeah, you that's know, right. That's one thing my dad always talked about, mm-hmm. find a need and fill it. Yeah. And, okay. you know, just, so that's kind of what stirred in me. And I mean, and join the Holy Spirit in that. Like, join, yeah. Blackaby talks about experiencing mm-hmm. God. Join what the Holy Spirit's doing. That's right. Now, I can, you for I can that. say I can sit on something for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, oh, I'm sure other people want to do exactly. that. This can't be, you know. And then one thing, obviously, the Lord's like steps were so clear and providential and just ended up finally talking to someone about it and saying like I really do feel like this is what God's put on my my soul and it was just the right person that was like well let's go do it and I was like okay so we started beloved and just to to really meet that need of the mom that our our mission is to connect them to God and to connect them to one another through community because it's that lack of wanting to go to church after being divorced um, or or never married and having a child and then the isolation that occurs because of, it's just, it's hard. Like you said, with two parents, it's hard. So with one, it's very exhausting um, to keep that going. So what are you doing helping those ladies we, and those families? Yeah. So like our program is we meet two times a month at Community Church on St. Simons. And we provide um, a children's ministry that's that's free and provided for them. We have a beautiful group of volunteers that just love those kids. And then the moms um, come and drop their children off there. We all eat dinner together. The children eat dinner. The moms eat dinner. And then we have a speaker come. And then, But what they love the most is small group time to really talk to each other. And just while their know, kids are playing with someone else. While their kids else. are playing. They're, they know they're, and they're being taken they're care safe of. Environment. That's right. They're fed. Um, and just getting to talk with other moms to know, like, I'm not the only one in this, you know, and they learn from each other. What are you doing and how can we carpool and just create that community? And you really get to see, it's an honor to watch a mom come in that's just exhausted and even just kind of their countenance, even just heavy. And as they keep, you know, connecting to God and connecting with one another, it's just the brightness that that's unveiled. It's really beautiful. That's fantastic. Well, how do they reach you? How would they get to be yeah, involved there? So they can email me at hello at belovedministries.com. And then we also say it again, please. Hello at belovedministries.com. And then we also have a website. It's beloved ministries.com. Very good. Yep. So again, they, they, they're nervous about going. Yeah. You know, typical. That's one thing that I've always tried to tell myself, <laughs> look, I'm going to go to this gala. I'm going to go by myself. I'm going to mm-hmm. go, to this concert, I'm gonna try mm-hmm. to go with somebody. I'm not gonna try to go by myself, or something right. like that. But sometimes you just have to go by yeah. yourself. Like I know I've seen you at a lot of prayer gatherings, yeah. right? I mm-hmm. tend to go to them too. Mm-hmm. I try to sit with my prayer group or whatever, right. friends, home yeah. group. But sometimes I just can't. But I definitely want. I do not want to isolate. I want to yes. be involved. Yes. So when you think about that, this girl's thinking, okay, I've got a problem. I have needs. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid to ask for help, but I'm gonna ask for help. Mm-hmm. Oh, that church is so nice. It's so big and. It's intimidating. Yeah. How do how, help them get through that? Help mm-hmm. walk them mm-hmm. through what's going to happen. Yeah, just if a mom is thinking yes. about that. Well, we have stories of moms sitting in the parking lot even and, and driving away and not yeah, exactly. coming. Absolutely. Um, but once they can go, they yes. realize, oh my gosh, these are nice people. These people are nice, you know. And well, and that's our whole goal is we don't want one mom to 
to not be spoken to or looked at, know their name and let them know we're so glad they're here and we love them so much and the Heavenly Father loves them. So you get that from the moment you walk in the door, there's a greeter at the door to all the way back into the room that we meet with. But I get that. That's for all, for single people in general, oftentimes just getting to the door can be the hardest spot, and that's the enemy just trying to keep us from the goodness that's offered at a prayer group, at Beloved, at church. Um, and so I even, for myself, I'll even pray before I go, like, Lord, you know I feel this way, but I know I need to do these things. These mm-hmm. are good for me. They're about you. Would you just, I want to feel seen by you. And yeah. it's so cool that I'll see somebody I know or, you know, Absolutely. things like that. But he provides for us. He really does. Yeah. And- uh, again, though, I'm 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 kind of nervous about this lady's nervous about going there. Yeah. Um, tell her more of the details. I mean, you mentioned a group. I'm gonna have to sit at a table. With yeah. People. Yeah. And I don't know if I want to talk about my stuff. Right. Well, and that's a beautiful thing. We don't make everybody talk. You don't have to talk if you don't want to. And the the great thing about the group is it'll be the same group each time. So you'll kind of get more used to it. You have a place to sit. You don't have to worry about where am I gonna sit. And there's small group leaders there that are going to call, you know, check in with you and try to encourage you. And you can just observe as long as you want to. And then, you know, what I think will happen is you'll end up meeting a person or two and enjoying the conversation and wanting to connect. That's good. Yeah. And so, uh, so is there a bunch of ladies just sitting around the table or is there somebody leading that group? Or yeah. So more about that. Yeah. We, it's fun. There's a lot of energy. Okay. One of our leaders has a lot of energy. And um, so she'll do a welcome. We do giveaways. We have okay. music. Um, you don't have to dance when if you right. win, but you can if you want. Okay. Um, then we'll have a special topic of something that's something about being a single mom and how maybe something practical that's biblically based on that they could take away from. And then they'll go into that small group time. Very good. Yeah. Okay, this is Clint Day with Speak Truth and Love. We're going to take another quick break. Welcome back to Speak Truth and Love. Clint Day from St. Simons Island here today talking to Megan. And one of the things a friend of mine suggested is the gift of celibacy. Mm-hmm. And and again, that's not a gift I have in, in my life, but at the same time, there are people that clearly have that. You mm-hmm. mentioned earlier Jesus, of course, was single, and mm-hmm. Paul, suppose, might have been single at the time he was writing a lot of the letters. Right. At some point he was married, we believe, because he was a rabbi. But at the same time, you know, how do we— make sure that we're where God wants us to be. Uh, someone else suggested, mm-hmm. you know, what are some fundamental habits that you want to try to, mm-hmm. that you're doing as a single person that you can tell, share with other people mm-hmm. that you do every day to maintain mm-hmm. that spirituality yeah. with Jesus. Well, and I think our friend made a good point that it's not like marriage is the end goal, yes. right? Even if I am designed to get married and that's part of God's plan for me, just because I get married doesn't mean that everything's going to kind of like, okay, now everything falls yeah, into butterflies place. Butterflies. Actually, probably yes. will get harder because you're yes. joining yourself with Absolutely. somebody else. So, And how, I would say it will get harder. Right. I will because, right. I mean, I know it's harder to be yeah. married than it is to be single, at least where, where I am right now. The stuff I have to deal with anyway is what I'm saying. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so I think cultivating... <laughs> Your relationship with the Lord is so important in in all of this, you know. So what am I doing on a day-to-day basis that if I did get married, I would want and can continue to do that. So that's as simple as making sure that I'm spending time with the Lord every day to like we've been talking about having healthy community that I'd want to continue if I ended up getting married. Um being adventurous, trying new things, not giving up on my my dreams. Like, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? And I'm going to like run after that with all I have. And I'm going to dream big because you have big plans for me. You have big ideas that you want to deposit in me. And I'm, I'm going to be in line with what I feel like the Lord's leading me to. And then the beauty of it is if he includes somebody else in my life, then that's if it's the right person, right? Then that's just going to help flourish what I already have going on that's good and again i think just try to make sure you're trying to eat healthy and for people that, that can't exercise mm-hmm. make sure you're doing that do mm-hmm. everything you can to yeah. live that as healthy lifestyle as you can because again some people get bad habits they'll start eating too much or eating too little yeah or they will start partying more than they maybe would have in the past or whatever and, and i think and they too, just get you, off track yeah if that is your goal we tell single moms this all the time like we are pro-marriage but it's not like okay once you get married then you're done you know Mm -hmm. if that's your goal you'll be dissatisfied Mm -hmm. just like if getting that promotion is your goal and you get it 
it's not going to be the thing <laughs> that fulfills. Like just we like know. those new pair of shoes, right? I want yeah. those new pair of shoes. You I get them. It's like, well, now they're old. I mean, but if now, I make yeah. the cheerleading exactly. team, if I exactly. do, you know, if I'm the captain, I mean, we all, it's not bad to have goals and want to do these things, but if I put them at a priority above my relationship with the Lord, like an idol and I get it, I'm going to be dissatisfied at the end because nothing can satisfy us right. except for the love of Christ. Amen. And to be in the word, not the world. Mm hmm. The Word of God. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do anything that violates the Word of God. Right. And how often do we see people out there, and myself included, right. mm -hmm. that where I violate the Word, it always catches up to me. Mm -hmm. And whatever we do in the dark always comes to mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. And so we got to have those boundaries. We've got to, again, it all starts with a thought. Yeah. Make sure we're renewing our mind with the Word of God. Right. And it's amazing how many, how easier it is to have that boundary when we do fill ourselves with the Word of God. Absolutely. But as soon as we want to break that boundary, what do we do? Mm -hmm. we, we back off our relationship to, right? with God. Yeah. We don't want to be feeling, quote, guilty about mm -hmm. it. And what he's doing, he's not necessarily going to punish us. Mm -hmm. He is going to discipline us mm -hmm. to either make us to be in a position where we want to grow closer to him yeah. or we're going to run from him. Right. You know, we're going to pull a Jonah and try to run away from him mm -hmm. and get in a ship and try to go away. And he's going to be mm -hmm. constantly the, the prodigal son where he's always constantly right. calling us back. Right. And so I want to encourage anybody out there that's kind of in that prodigal place. Yeah. I want to encourage you to really think about what Megan's saying mm -hmm. about building that relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That is the most important decision. Mm -hmm. Now tell us how to get a hold of the Beloved again. Yeah. So you can email me at hello at belovedministries.com. And then our email address is beloved-ministries.com. Could they get a hold of you to do counseling too the same way? That would work. Yeah, they okay, could do good. the same thing there. Do you have mm -hmm. a counseling number or whatever you want to share? I have an email, but either way. Would okay, go ahead and tell us the email. My for email for counseling is megan at mdrcounseling.com. Say it again, please. Megan, M-E-G-A-N, at mdrcounseling.com. Right. So real quickly, uh, 30 seconds or so, mm -hmm. what would be your final advice to that single out there that's mm -hmm. really struggling with where, they want, where God yeah. wants them to go? I would just say that the Lord sees you and he's for you and you can hold multiple things at one time. So he sees if you're longing to get married, he sees that, he knows that, and you can trust that he has a perfect plan for you. That's good. Can you say a quick prayer for him real quick? Yeah. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be with the people that are listening that are single and are convicted by this, Lord. I pray that they would feel your presence in a tangible way, that they are not forgotten, but that you see them and that you are for them and that you have great plans for their life, Lord. And that's not something that's just a flippant saying to make them feel better, Lord, but it's a real truth in who, the character of who you are, that you are good, that you are kind, that you are sovereign over all things. And so I just pray that you preserve and protect your perfect plan for all of us. And we give you the glory for it. And thank you that if it's for your glory, it's for our good. And it's your name I pray. Amen. Amen. And you're so right. Trust God. He's got a great plan for yep. your life. And I'd like to say good day, friends. I want to thank you for joining us today for Speak the Truth in Love with Clint Day on WCGA 1100 AM from St. Simons Island, Georgia. And remember, every day is a God day. Woop woop. Amen. <laughs>